أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال فما خطبك يا سامري قال بصرت بما لم يبصروا به فقبضت قبضة من أثر الرسول فنبذتها وكذلك سولت لي نفسي قال فاذهب فإن لك في الحياة أن تقول لا مساس وإن لك موعدا لن تخلفه وانظر إلى إلهك الذي ظلت عليه عاكفا لنحرقنه لنحرقنه ثم لننسفنه في اليم نسفا إنما إلهكم الله الذي لا إله إلا هو وسع كل شيء علما كذلك نقص عليك من أنباء ما قد سبق وقد آتيناك من لدنا ذكرا من أعرض عنه فإنه يحمل يوم القيامة وزرا خالدين فيه وساء لهم يوم القيامة حملا خالدين فيه وساء لهم يوم القيامة حملا بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا Welcome all to another episode of Tafsir Surah Taha We left off at the dialogue between Musa alayhi salam upon his return from the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Harun alayhi salam and after he finished his conversation with Harun alayhi salam Musa alayhi salam then he turned over to Samiri okay and we explained who Samiri was we said perhaps he happens to be from the Israelites and his name perhaps again is uh, Musa ibn Zafar and uh, perhaps he had been raised by Jibreel during the years in which Fir'aun used to kill all of the children because perhaps again his mother had uh, casted him into the cave. The reason why I say all of those is because we don't have in our tradition the details of this particular uh, individual but we have from the Judeo-Christian, the Israelite traditions that uh, such and such may be the case. In either case, some sources have it that he's from the Israelites and some sources have it that he's actually not from the Israelites. That's also uh, there as well. And that's why some people, some of the scholars, they said that the treatment of Musa alayhi salam for Harun was different than the treatment of Musa alayhi salam for Samiri. Why? Because Musa alayhi salam was sent to the Israelites themselves. Other than the Israelites were not expected, meaning they were not obliged to follow Musa alayhi salam. But if they did, then that would be great guidance for them, right? So if he wasn't from the Israelites, then it would make sense that Musa alayhi salam did not, the fact that he didn't speak to him as directly, as you know, um, aggressively if you want to use that word, uh, f- as he did with Harun alayhi salam. Harun alayhi salam is his brother, he's a prophet, he's, you know, um, uh, he'd been left uh, with a certain task. And in the apparent sight, it appeared to Musa alayhi salam that he didn't do his job, even though he did, as he explained afterwards. He said that uh, I was afraid of such and such. I was afraid that the uh, that the Israelites would be divided because if I took the, all of the people who continue to believe in Allah subhanahu wa taala away from there, then there would be the potential war that occurs between the Israelites themselves, and it may lead to the destruction of the Israelites themselves. So, considering that, I didn't do that. So that was an excuse upon which. Musa alayhi salam discontinued his conversation with Harun alayhi salam, meaning that he understood that the 
the, the case was really out of Harun alayhi salam's hand. However, if you notice with Samiri, he speaks in a whole another tone. With Harun alayhi salam, A, because he's a prophet, B, because he's from the Israelites, um, he, sp- he said, مَا مَنَعَكَ إِذْ رَأَيْتَهُمْ ضَلُّوا أَلَّا تَتَّبِعًا أَفَعَصَيْتَ أَمْرِي What stopped you from not uh, following my, uh, when you saw them becoming misguided, that you didn't follow my commandment uh, and, and you didn't follow me, right? That you didn't come uh, and catch up to me and tell me what's happening. As for Samiri, he says, فَمَا خَطُبُكَ يَا سَامِرِي What is your story, O Samiri, right? Because if Musa alayhi salam was dealing with an Israelite, the conversation would be different because he would be obliged to follow the sharia and the guidance that was granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Musa alayhi salam. So he says, فَمَا خَطَبُكَ يَا سَامِرِي This is one way that some scholars explained because of which they said that likely uh, Samiri is not from the Israelites. Uh, anyways, as we said, we don't really have all of the details of whether he is from the Israelites or whether he's not from the Israelites. Uh, we just have things alluding to, to both. فَمَا خَطَبُكَ يَا سَامِرِي قَالْ بَصُرْتُ بِمَا لَمْ يَبْصُرُوا بِهِ فَقَبَضْتُ قَبْضَةً مِنْ أَثَرِ الرَّسُولِ He said, I saw what they did not see. I noticed what they did not notice. I was able to comprehend what they did not comprehend. Basically, I was granted a form of tuition, intuition that they did not have. Uh, and what was that? فَقَبَضْتُ قَبْضَةً مِنْ أَثَرِ الرَّسُولِ so I grabbed a handful of the, uh, of, of the remains of the messenger or of the leftovers after the step of the messenger, right? Now, uh, to explain this, I have to say that there's actually two potential explanations for this. The first explanation is basartu. Basartu literally means to see, okay? Uh, that I saw something. And the other explanation is that basurtu actually means I, uh, I understood, okay? And both of those are possible because basara uh, actually does mean to see. Uh, and uh, basura, however, it can also mean to see, but it can also at the same time mean to understand something because any verb form that comes with the middle letter with a dhamma on top of it fa'ula right that has this particular meaning within it where that quality becomes uh, instilled within that individual so when you say sharuf rajul that means the person had become on, honorable as in that bec- that quality is fully inhibited uh, that f- quality is fully exhibited within this individual it's instilled within this individual and so forth right so, uh, si- similarly, when you say uh, faquha, that means the person has become a faqih, right? He's, that quality of fiqh is now literally part and parcel of his blood and his flesh and so on and so forth. So when you say basura, if you understand it within that light as well, then it would mean more like an, a sight that led to an understanding, okay? So it's as if his entire existence came to see this, right? This is what I've now come to see, even though you're not really seeing. We see that, we see that in English as well. I see, even though you're actually hearing and understanding, right? So some said that this is the type of see this means, okay? This is the type of seeing, as in a metaphorical seeing, as in the mind seeing something, as in the mind comprehending some information. And both of those opinions can be uh, strongly argued for. Based on the first opinion, in which this happens to be a physical sight, meaning the person literally saw something. Okay, what the scholars they said he saw Jibreel alayhi salam on top of his horse, on top of his mount, and when he saw Jibreel alayhi salam, and of course remember if you remember from the previous episode we said that perhaps again he was raised by Jibreel alayhi salam uh, as his mother had left him behind in the cave, considering that that Fir'aun, if he got his hands on this particular child, he would have killed him. So Musa alayhi salam, uh, sorry, not Musa alayhi salam, Musa ibn Zafar, he was then raised up by Jibreel, right? Uh, that's one uh, opinion about who this individual really is. So now considering all of these, it's quite possible that he saw Jibreel and he actually recognized him, right? And he saw the, the horse of Jibreel. This is an opinion that a lot of different Mufassirin, perhaps the majority of the Mufassirin give. 
he saw Jibreel's horse and alayhi salam and when he saw the uh, horse moving he noticed that under the foot of the horse the the area that was simply dirt it now started to grow green okay so he noticed that any place that the rasul i.e. jibril would touch and step on or even his horse that would actually come to life even if it was essentially dead okay so then what did he do he went and took from that soil and he says waqabattu qabdatan min athar ar-rasul so i grabbed a handful from the uh, f- from the place in which the rasul had stepped right fanabadtuha then i took all of this soil and i casted it i i spread it all over that golden calf that i had uh, carved and then that calf of course uh, became uh, came to life and then it made the khuar it started lowing as well lowing as well and so on and so forth right so that's one understanding another understanding is that it's a metaphorical seeing meaning he understood he saw like i see your i see what you're saying like that type of thing so in that with that second understanding what we'll understand from the verse is that he says basurtu bima lam yabsuru bihi i saw what they did not see faqabattu qabdatan min athar rasul i saw i i understood what they did not understand and i i took hold of a portion of the legacy of the messenger so in this way the word ar rasul is actually referring to musa and harun or the messengers in general the prophets in general and the word ar rasul over here would not be referring to the lesser popular meaning of the word rasul which is jibril alayhi salam right so he said i took hold of a portion of the legacy of uh, musa alayhi salam and harun but what i did with that legacy fanabathuha i chucked it away i literally uh, flinged it away i didn't care for it and that's wa kadhalika sawalat li nafsi this is what my nafs this is what my soul and my own desires had led me to do okay so he's explaining why he ended up uh, no why despite the fact that he knew Musa alayhi salam and Harun alayhi salam are calling to Allah azza wa jal the lord of the universe uh, despite all of that he still continued to call people to the worship of a golden calf which was simply a carved animal uh, not uh, anything real and not, definitely not a god So he said this was what my desires had led me to do right qal so allah's messenger musa alayhi salam says qal now as i said there's two opinions which one of them is a stronger stronger opinion um wallahu a'lam in either case i uh, personally uh, have some inclination towards the second opinion and that is that it was something that he had simply uh, seen Uh, like a metaphorical seeing it was something that he understood because the word basura like all of the other words that come on the verb form fa'ula have that connotation where it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, as physical as that particular word appears otherwise normally in arabic when you are talking about seeing physically you say absara yubsiru to see right whereas basura it almost sounds to me like uh, from Uh, the linguistic perspective that it was something that he understood he understood a trick that they did not understand uh, and considering that he took a portion of the legacy of the messenger also because the word ar rasul originally is used for messengers and it is almost th- that's the primary usage of the word ar rasul and the secondary usage of the word ar rasul is to use it for the angels So likely he must be referring to the messengers. This is what I uh, think. So I uh, give consideration to the second opinion more than I do the uh, the first one, and that's the opinion that Ibn Ashu also uh, suggested for himself as well. Even though this is the minority opinion. قال فذهب فإن لك في الحياة أن تقول لا مساس. He said, go فإن لك في الحياة أن تقول لا مساس. Leave. He, he literally now exiled him. He told them, "You cannot live with the Israelites any longer. You don't get to live with us any longer. We thought that you could stay with us, despite the fact that you're not actually one of us, right? According to that tafsir, you're not actually one of us. But now you don't have the opportunity to live amidst us, 
And then he continues and he says that your punishment for what you have done is فَإِنَّ لَكَ فِي الْحَيَاةِ أَن تَقُولَ لَا مِسَاسِ What you're going to be doing throughout your life now is that you will say لا مساس, don't touch me, don't touch me. So now any person that would approach this individual, a Samiri, Samiri would simply tell him لا مساس, don't touch me, don't touch me. That would be something that now Samiri is going to be doing throughout the rest of his life. Or it would mean just get away from me. La misas, don't even come close to me, don't get, get away from me, type of thing. And now imagine if you meet a person, as soon as you get close to them, you try to shake their hand and you say, Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. They say, don't touch me or get away from me. What are you going to do? Of course, this is not going to be a person who will be able to flourish in domestic life. So this is what's going to happen to him now. He, since he corrupted people when he tried to live with them, now he's going to be living in exile for the rest of his life. And he'll continue to say, لا مساس, don't touch me, get away from me. وَإِنَّ لَكَ مَوْعِدًا لَن تُخْلَفَ And you're going to have on top of that an appointment that, and, a, and a promise that, that you are not going to لَن uh, تُخْلَفَ Right? That would be a definite appointment. That appointment is not an appointment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to let uh, uh, you know, uh, be. Uh, it won't just, you won't be able to pass up on this. It will be a serious promise. It will be a serious warning of the Day of Judgment. And look, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says over here, and the way Musa alayhi salam says, it's in a very mocking fashion. Because there's two different uh, things you could say. You have a maw'id against you, you have an appointment against you, and you have a, an appointment for you. And the word laka is that you have an appointment for you. So it's going to be an appointment for your benefit, right? But Musa alayhi salam is simply mocking this individual over here, right? That you thought that this particular God will be able to save you and so on and so forth. And you uh, led people astray and you and you and you. So now what's going to happen? You will have that, you know, that appointment that you so thought about. That appointment that you so believed in through your worship of the calf, the golden calf that you crafted with your own hands as well, right? That appointment that you so thought, you will have that appointment, right? You will have that appointment for you, even though it's going to be against you, right? So it should have been, وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكَ مَوْعِدًا You're going to have a maw'id that is going to be against you, an appointment which will be against you, but no, Musa alayhi salam, pretty much flips the script and says that you will have a maw'id, an appointment for you, mocking him. لَن تُخْلَفَ You're not going to miss it. Right? وَانْظُرْ إِلَىٰ إِلَٰهِكَ أَلَّذِي ظَلْتَ عَلَيْهِ عَاكِفًا And look at that, that God of yours. You thought that you could get away with worshipping this God and you thought this God is going to actually do something for you. Even though Musa alayhi salam knows that it's not his God, again mockingly Musa alayhi salam speaks in this fashion to him, that God of yours, right? Even though the God is who? Allah azza wa And the proof of that is the ayah right after, إِنَّمَا إِلَهُكُمْ Allah. Your Lord is only Allah. So Musa alayhi salam knew that his Lord is obviously only Allah, just as he's the Lord of Musa and Harun, he's the Lord of the world, Right? But because this person thought, and he also made it appear to other people, as if this calf, the golden calf, is now going to be the god of the Israelites and so on and so forth, he said, look at that god of yours, the god you thought that can do this, that, and the other, the god that you uh, allowed to uh, low and so on and so forth. Uh, Musa alayhi salam said, الَّذِي ظَلْتَ عَلَيْهِ عاكفة. The one you continued to... Uh, the, the one you continue to sit by, right? Akifa, Akifa, Akifa Yaakifu literally means Lazima Yelzamu. When a person goes in one place and literally uh, abstains from all other things and secludes himself in this situation, that's why they call it I'tikaf, I'tikaf, because you go by yourself in a certain place and you seclude yourself. So Musa alayhi salam is saying, Look at that God of yours, the Lord of yours that you continuously sat by and you thought is going to be able to save you, look at what we're going to do to it. We're going to burn it down. Because you used the gold and you forced everybody to throw that gold so that they will burn it and then you took that gold that melted and you made a god out of it, what we'll do is we'll burn it back again. 
And that gold we don't need anymore because you've made it impure by making it into a, an idol. What are we going to do to it? Then we will take this and we will throw it into the uh, sea. Nasfa. We will throw it, uh, we'll make it into little pieces or grinded little pieces and then we will chuck it into uh, the ocean or we'll chuck it into the sea. And what they mean by the sea is the Red Sea, as we spoke last time uh, in one of the previous talks as well, uh, about the fact that there is the, there's the Gulf of Aqaba and there's the Gulf of Suez, right? So both of them lead into uh, the Red Sea. So some scholars, they said that this is this particular ayah uh, and this particular statement of Musa salam is referring to the Gulf of Suez, in which he was going to chuck this particular uh, idol that would be first burnt and then grinded into small little pieces. So those grains of the uh, of the gold, you would just chuck it into the ocean. Innama ilahu kumullahu ladi la ilaha illahu. Indeed, and of a surety, innama is a is an instrument in Arabic which affirms everything that is after it, and it also affirms it at the exclusion of other possibilities. So when Allah says innama ilahu kum. Indeed, your Lord, he really says, indeed, your Lord is only, okay, only. The word only is going to be added. And there are no other possibilities to this particular statement. Innama ilahu kumullah. Indeed, your only Lord is who? Allah Azza wa Jal. Alladhi la ilaha illahu. The one that there is no God except Him, no deity worthy of worship except Him. Wasi'a kulla shay'in ilma. Wasi'a kulla shay'in ilma. And one of the things that I, I wanted to point out over here is that the word ilah, at times I translate it as God, at times I translate it as Lord. Uh, you can say it's a loose translation, that's one thing. Or you can say that some theologians actually believe the word ilah in some of its usages actually has the meaning of a Rabb as well. وَسِعَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, uh, Allah's knowledge is, it encompasses all things. Wasi'a yasa'u. It to encompass something, to become expansive. Allah's knowledge expands over all things. Allah kulla shay, every single thing. Kadalika naqusu alayka min anba'i ma qat sabak. Now the story of Musa alayhi salam has come to an end. Okay? The surah is Surah Taha. And the surah is the Surah Al Kaleem. And the surah is the surah to Musa. This surah is known as the surah of Musa alayhi salam. The surah of Kalimullah. The one who spoke to Allah azza wa jal. The surah to Taha as well. So most of this surah is actually in reference to Musa alayhi salam. However, as we said earlier as well, there are actually a number of themes. Depending on how you divide it up, there are uh, five themes within this surah. Okay? The first theme that we discussed is the theme... In which Allah subhanahu, which is basically the preface of the surah, in which Allah subhanahu wa taala speaks about the Quran and so on and so forth. Then the story of Musa alayhi salam. Some some people divide the story of Musa into two different scenes. One scene with Fir'aun and the one with the Israelites after he was in the Sinai. Okay. Then after that that particular scene is done, then the conclusion of the scene. So we're now going to read the conclusion of the scene. Then the conclusion of the scene. The scene is already done. But the conclusion and the benefits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drew from the stories that he gave of Musa alayhi salam. Then comes a section about the day of judgment and how the day of judgment will be and how people will be resurrected and how they will look and how and how and a lot of number of things, number of things about the day of judgment. And then after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the day of judgment comes the story of Adam alayhi salam in a very brief fashion and then the conclusion of the surah with a number of different topics uh, within as well I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the tawfiq to, to practice to convey and to learn the message within the surah Allah continues and he says كَذَلِكَ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ مَا قَدْ سَبَقْ Just like we did right now in surah Taha by reporting the story of Musa alayhi salam to you, O Muhammad, and by delivering the story of Musa alayhi salam to you, O Muhammad, just like that, 
Do we grant you? Do we report to you? Do we narrate to you, O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the stories of those people who had come before as well? Just like what? Look at the next part of the verse. وَقَدْ أَعْتَيْنَاكَ مِنْ لَدُنَّا ذِكْرًا And we have surely given you from us a dhikr, a reminder. So if you notice, the story of Musa alayhi salam was a little bit chopped, meaning that it didn't start at the beginning, meaning that it didn't have the complete scenes. Uh, and many, many times Allah used the word fa to sort of skip a number of different scenes and go to the next one, right? So Allah says, just like this do we report the stories to you. Just like this do we narrate the stories to you. Of all of the people who had come before, min amba'i ma qad sabaq, from the stories of those people who had come before. And then he says, وَقَدْ أَعْتَيْنَاكَ مِنْ لَدُنَّا ذِكْرًا And we have given to you from us a reminder, meaning that the purpose of these stories is a reminder. And the purpose of these stories is not to sit there and enjoy the storyline and so on and so forth. The purpose of a story is greater in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal than simply a narrative. The purpose of the story is a reminder therein. And the purpose of the story is to console the messenger. The purpose of the story is for it to act as a wake-up call to those people who read it in the future. <coughs> the purpose of the story is to correct some sort of corruption, some corruptions that have occurred in the Bible and the Torah in terms of these stories as well. مَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَحْمِلُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وِزْرًا Whoever turns away from this, from what? From the reminder. And some people said that the reminder might be referring to the Qur'an, and that's quite possible. I.e. the Qur'an is full of stories, and those stories are meant to be reminders. مَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْهُ Whoever turns away from it. فَإِنَّهُ يَحْمِلُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وِزْرًا so that person will carry on the day of judgment a wizard, a very, very heavy weight. Wizard means a thiqal, it means a heavy weight, okay? So whoever turns away from this Qur'an or whoever turns away from the reminders within these stories, then he will definitely carry on the day of judgment a very, very heavy weight. Khalidina fihi. They will remain therein forever. Wasa'alahum yawm al qiyamati. Himla, they will remain therein, i.e., in the hellfire forever. And wasa'alahum yawm al qiyamati himla. And how bad is what they are carrying of weight on the day of judgment? They don't need to carry this weight because the purpose of a reminder is for them to be reminded. They made their own choices to not be reminded, and because they made those choices, it will lead them to have a very, very heavy, exhaustive weight that they have to carry on their backs. وَسَاءَلَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَحِمْلًا How is this day of judgment? In which people will end up carrying a weight simply because they turned away from the reminder. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the tawfiq to understand uh, the reminder. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to take uh, heed before the day of judgment occurs. Inshallah in the next episode we'll discuss more about the day of judgment. Jazakumullahu khairan for listening. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين